everybody. It's Jo here. This is Margaret. Hi, Margaret. Hi. Hello, everybody. Margaret Shepherd is an accountant um, and she's been a founder member of the midlife movement, um, obviously, since it started because you were a founder member. So I've been really excited to watch Margaret's um, dreams come true over the last over the last few months. So I'm going to talk to you um, about her adventure, because I think we all have things that we secretly would like to do but we don't necessarily um, do them because we feel that they're out of reach or um, or nobody wants to do it with us or you just feel that it's people like us don't do that or all these limiting beliefs that we all have and that we've all often had since childhood and going through our adulthood that um, oh I'd really like to do x y or z but I, it, I can't do it um, so I want to talk to Margaret about her dream so let's take it away, Margaret. So tell us what um, what you do for a living first and what your day to day life is, is normally like. Um, I'm an accountant and um, bookkeeper. So I for some clients, I actually do start to finish. So right from raising invoices, receiving invoices from suppliers and paying them right through to preparing their accounts and filing them um, for others, I'm I go in and step in as a pair of shoes if people are short of staff I don't do that quite so much now but I have done and my biggest client basically I'm there for, I was their finance manager for 18 months and it was just me doing everything in the finance department now I'm moving on more to do things like their forecasting their um keeping their contracts online and compliant and things like that. It is a 10 million pound company, so it is quite a large one. Uh, so they do need support in that way. And, and then basically I do anything and everything my clients want to do on a admin stroke finance basis. Mm. And how long have you been self-employed? Since 2006. So it's quite some time then. You've yes. been working there in your, in your yes. little, little office I, there at home. Yeah. I, well, I did have an office. I worked in other offices, but I find it being at home is now better. Yeah. I did have a stab at trying to go back into employment um, and ended up telling the company where they could put their job. Um, so <laughs> I have decided I am unemployable now. <laughs> join the club yeah. <laughs> I think that when when you get to a certain age you feel as if you've seen seen everything done everything and you, and you kind of lose your ability to suffer fools don't you yeah well I never have <laughs> suffered fools very well but yes yeah, you're right I do tend now to be less tolerant of yeah. Yeah. being told what to do by someone who actually doesn't have a clue what they're talking about yeah, well, you've had years of experience, haven't you? And it obviously yeah. worked well for you. Working from home, has that helped as well? Because I know that you've been a full-time carer at times, well, full-time, you know, around your your work, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, at one point I had my mum living here who had dementia. I have two special needs sons, one of whom now is in care, um, supported living because mm. it became impossible for him to be at home. And actually, to be brutally honest, I moved my office out while I had all three at home because yeah. it was counterproductive but obviously I came home in the evening I'm, I'm lucky because my husband only worked part-time so he took quite of the brunt of it mm -hmm. um which is quite rare I have to say but I have them in the evenings um even my son that's in supported living phones every single day about something I have to organize his food deliveries I have to pay his phone bills basically everything but his rent I yeah. still control and pay because he's not capable of doing it himself. Mm. Uh, if he got, if he knew how much PIP money he got, um, he'd spend a lot on day one. So yeah. it has to be managed. My other one um, who is autistic, but uh, what was Asperger's, he's actually set his own business up now and he's doing really well. But again, he could not work in a, pressurized environment where he was being told you've got to get on you've got to get work quicker you've got to work quicker he just couldn't do it and that really knocked him for six um mm. but I got a coach for him <laughs> learning working and networking so much I got a coach that specialized in his age group and his needs and she was brilliant he's he's built his business up 
in a year to from one client to about six or seven um oh. and he's doing I mean it, he's not earning a phenomenal amount of money but he loves what he's doing and he he's doing really well at it you know he does get rave reviews what, what does he do he does gardening oh right so, but he does he, you know he does cutting grass weeding the normal things but yeah. they've also taken down huge hedges they've my husband helps him now with those sort of things but they cut hedges they tidy up lawn clearance you name it they have a go at it sort of thing so you know all fairness yeah. to him he's yeah. really really blossoming and that's it's wonderful and that sense of purpose as well and, and oh yeah it's, it's lovely finding, it's finding isn't it that what 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 you can can do rather than what you can't yeah. do yeah so you and, and to be honest that was lockdown right um yeah. at the beginning of lockdown because neither of my boys understood lockdown and why they couldn't go out and why they couldn't talk to people and right. this sort of thing and and they can't entertain themselves so you have to find something for them to do so i've bought a few packets of seeds pretending i was going to garden which was never going to work and <laughs> just left them on the side and yeah. he he picked them up and said well can i do it and yeah go ahead and that was the start of it he he just took it from there fabulous yeah. so the thing is the situation that you've had then margaret you've very much been in that sort of sandwich generation where you've had to look after an elderly parent and yeah. you had children to look after, but because of your son's special needs, that it, they don't sort of leave home and, and that bit, bit is finished. No. That's ongoing. That's ongoing. My <clears> oldest <throat> son's 22 now, and he has stated he's never leaving home. Um, and my 21 year old has only left home because we forced the issue and he went into supported living. And so he has carers helping him now. Otherwise, they would both be home and it would be long term to permanent because they are not capable of looking after themselves they're really not so where were you in all of this then margaret lost mm. completely because margaret disappeared mm. margaret was mum margaret was worker margaret was wife but she wasn't she wasn't doing anything for herself she couldn't she didn't have time she didn't she didn't well, she functioned i would say yeah um she lost confidence um i was talking about it the other day you know when i was in my late 20s i'd wear really loud dangly earrings and be really really bright makeup you know and i must have looked a clown but it was me you know and yeah. that all went and yeah. i'm only just beginning to find margaret back but it's lovely finding her <laughs> and it's lovely. lovely having fun doing it <laughs> yes Yes. I mean, that's the key, isn't it? Because we, we lose our, our ability to have fun when, when life sort of piles on us like this. Yeah. And um, I think that um, midlife is a time when, when we, we have, it's what Chip Conley calls a pit stop. It's not a crisis, it's a pit stop. It's where we need to stop and take stock. Yeah. Um, but your situation has been such that it's been very difficult to find that time. But you have. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I saw the other day and now I can see, you know, you, you, your hair's come back. Your, your brightness has come yeah. back in your hair and it's starting yeah. to show outwardly. Yeah. But there's always been something you've wanted to do, isn't there? Tell us. Oh, about yes. Oh, yes. Um, when I was younger, um, my dad wouldn't travel. My dad refused to leave England. He said, no, I went out during the war. I'm never going again. Right. So I challenged him when I was in my early 20s and said, well, if you won't take mum away, I will. Oh, OK, go on then. So I used to take her once a year. We used to go for a few days somewhere in Europe, nowhere particularly exotic or what have you. But we used to travel around. We used to do coach trips because it was easier for me, mm. you know, worrying about her as well as me. Um, but it gave me the bug for wanting to travel. And while I don't want to go completely around the world, there were always places I absolutely wanted to see. And they were sort of like my bucket list. If I can get to them before I die, they'll be, it would be wonderful. But they were pipe dreams. They, I, I, they're not for me. Um, I'd never be able to save the money. I wouldn't be able to leave the family. I wasn't sure if the family wanted to go with me or whatever. And I just left it as a dream till about three years ago, 
And then I started saying, you know, that what I would really have loved to do is this. And people said, well, why don't you? You can do it. And that sort of kernel of gentle encouragement took life. So that two years ago, I actually started saying, not I would love to go, but I am going. Yeah. I am going to do these things. Um, and then as these things are, you again, you say you're going, but it's still not reality. So I had to put reality around it. So I set a date that on my 65th birthday or as close to it afterwards as possible, I was going and that was 2022 um, and lockdown happened and I was beginning to think am I going to get there in 2022 but I thought no I'm going to try I'm going to try doing the bookings so now it's all booked I am going on my bucket list holiday starting the 3rd of May next year I had to make it the third because my youngest son's birthday is the second and he would never have forgiven me if I wasn't there for his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and who are you going with, Margaret? Um, it's a mixture. Um, the first month I'm going on my own and I'm doing Scandinavia, so traveling all around th three countries in Scandinavia, ending up in Finland because that's where my ancestors came from and doing different things there. Then I've got a gap of coming home for a few days, which was built in just in case COVID regulations did it. And then I'm going to, flying out on my own to Canada and spending two, two weeks on my own. And then my husband's joining me and we're doing the Rocky Mountain um, train trip and walking on an ice floe and all sorts of things like that. And then on the 26th of June, I'm flying from there direct to New Zealand. He's flying home to England. And my son is flying from Heathrow to Singapore and having a four hour stopover and then coming on to New Zealand where I'll meet him at the airport. And he'll join me just for the New Zealand leg. So I've got, and at the beginning of the holiday, I've got a friend that might join me. My first week's in Shetland or first five days is in Shetland and she, um, so she might join me for the first five days because she lived up there at some one point and it's lovely for her to go back sort of thing so, so mostly on my own mostly on your own and 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 you were saying you're you're so you're 64 now yeah so you're sort of in that um we were talking about are you in midlife and and you know you're one of the are you one of the older members of the midlife movement and so on yeah and um we, we, the actual definition of midlife is anything between sort of um, 45 and 65. Mm. But actually, when you when you look back in 1900, our lifespan was um, 48, I believe. Mm. And then in the year 2000, um, 48, it was it was 78. Sorry, <laughs> my maths is terrible talking to an accountant. Um, <laughs> so we've added 30 years lifespan yeah to to our to our lives and um and this period of, of midlife now is is stretched out it's a longer period yeah um and I, I just think it's wonderful that you're you're taking that you know most people when they're coming up to 65 because of the way we were brought up and so on are starting to think about retirement and slowing down and you're going right this is my time and, I, and I'm off yeah and, I call it my gap year before I retire. <laughs> so where um, students now think they have to take a cap gap year before they start university, I'm taking it. I'm taking it the other end of the extreme and taking it before I wind down into semi-retirement and then full retirement. So, okay. so well, you don't know what you're going to want to do once you've done this travelling, do you? No. So, no. <laughs> I do know that I will be winding down. Um, work-wise work-wise yeah. but not giving up completely but I also know that I've kind of got the travel bug even though I haven't traveled yet and I keep thinking oh I could do that or I could do this and yeah. as I said my husband <laughs> when I offered, offered my husband the chance, chance to join me when he couldn't leave the dogs that long <laughs> so I thought well I know where my place is in yeah <laughs> But that, this is the difference between you, Margaret, and so many of us when we think about these things. 
that was a, an obstacle and you mm. just pushed it to one side because what you want to do is so important to you that you're going to do it regardless yeah. how yeah. do you feel about traveling on your own I have done it before for the odd week or so um so I'm not worried about the traveling itself I was saying to one of the someone I was talking to about the, the one thing that I've got in back of my mind that's sort of niggling is how do I get my washing done? <laughs> Which sounds really stupid. Details, but, Margaret, oh, details. <laughs> yeah, a little detail. And I'm thinking, well, I'll, I'll just have to take each day as it comes, you know. Yes. But I am traveling, so I'm only staying three days in any given place. And I thought, well, I'll have to look for their equivalent of laundrettes and things or buy clothes or whatever. I'm not letting it phase me um yeah I know I've got to get fitter to do it because obviously I'm going to have to carry suitcases and things like that so I have bought a bike <laughs> um which is quite funny as well because it's a very big bike um and there's not many you can't actually get bikes quite easily at the moment but in, it's a it's a hybrid one which means I can go on road or off-road but it's quite big and I've got very short legs. So <laughs> I have to have the seat quite low down and the handlebars are up here, which is good because it keeps my back straight. Yeah. But I'm always worried I'm gonna, if I get round, I'm gonna fall off. <laughs> but if ever there was an incentive to, to get fit, you know, yes. you've got it. So, you know, it, even, even on that, you've got that adventure of making, of getting fitter. Yes. All, so, all dovetailing for that um, adventure that you're going to have next year. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the um, training really, it hasn't kicked in. I'm not the most natural fitness fanatic. Um, I do go to the gym or I see a personal trainer once a week, but um, I'm building up. I'm now doing Pilates as well when I can. So, and then if the weather's okay, I'll go on the bike, but I'm, I'm a very fair weather cyclist. <laughs> so have you ever, have you been sort of into your fitness before? Or is it not completely... as much as this? Yeah. Um, okay. When 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 I was younger, when I bought my first flat when I was twenty four, so forty years ago now, <laughs> um, I didn't have a car and I worked eight miles away from my home, so I used to cycle to and from work. Right. Um, and I used to dance as well, by tap modern ballet at the same time. So I did a lot of activity, but not fitness if you see what I mean it, yes. I called it I mean cycling was a necessity and the dancing was fun yeah. um so I didn't yeah. think of it like that but I had an accident and I end, ended up sitting on someone's car bonnet um and I broke a bone in my wrist um and what I didn't realize at the time was I'd also pushed out um I pushed my back slightly out of alignment and in trying to put it back, I ended up with sciatica, which I lived with for 30 years. I mean, it wasn't heavy pain, but I had pain every day. Yeah. And um, when I got my personal trainer, it was, oh, I'll give it three months and see how it will go. And that's six years ago. But since I've seen him, I've only ever had one bout of sciatica really badly and I know what I did to cause that right. um and we work on keeping me mobile and supple and yeah. um that's basically meant I can even consider my dream because if I still had the sciatica that badly I, it wouldn't be an option because yeah. I wouldn't be able to walk enough so you've been building towards this and and arranging things for yourself for quite a few years then really yeah if you but not that thought that's what you were going to do yeah. Not consciously, yeah. but certainly subconsciously, things have happened that have meant that I will be able to do what mm -hmm. I want to do, sort of thing. I've gone travelling to Birmingham and then up to Aberdeen to get to Shetland. And then when I come back from Shetland, I'm staying one night in Edinburgh and then flying across to Denmark and I'm going to Copenhagen for two nights. Um, and then... Because I said one of my strictures when I said I want to do it, I don't want to drive very much. Um, I've got to drive on the wrong side of the road and I've got to navigate. And, and I just thought, do you know what? That's too much like hard work. I'll so, so what you've done then is, is you've you've looked at anything that might stop you. Yeah. You've worked out how to mitigate that and do yeah. it 
the way that suits you best. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. So from Copenhagen, I'm getting the train across to Sweden, to Malmo. Um, and then I've got two or three other places in Sweden I'm going to end up in Stockholm. And from Stockholm, I'm flying to Helsinki, where I do have to hire a car because you can't get around in Finland any other way. Oh, okay. Whereas apparently Sweden, the train services are brilliant. So, so then I'm going to Helsinki. Now, Hel um, Finland is where my great grandfather came from. And um, I, he lived with us when I was little. So oh. I knew him till I was 10. He died when I was 10. So it's somewhere, again, a bucket list thing. I've always wanted to go back to see where he came from you know and I don't know anything more about him we can't find we can find his father's name but we can't find any more details so um, are you going to do a who do you think you are while you're there and um, I'm, I'm going to try actually yeah, yeah. yes um, I don't think I'll be successful but I'm going to have a go yeah well, you might um, find relatives over there might you yeah I might well he had a brother so they might well be um and I've been told there's a place in Finland, well, I've got to investigate a bit more, where it's a round bowl that you can run round in about, you know, a minute, where Norway, Sweden and Finland all join. So you, if you run round this bowl thing, you're in three different countries. Oh, wow. In this 20 bowl? minutes. What, so it, it's like, like a circle, like a compact, I'm told, I've not seen it, but it's like a compacted ring that mm. you just run round. And then you go through three countries in in a minute, you know. So wow. it, yeah, I know. I thought, oh, I'll put that. And every time people tell me something about the countries I'm going to, I put a down a note and see if I can fit them in, you know. Yeah. yeah. So I'm doing that. Well, how have you um, organised all the flights and and the connections and all that sort of thing? That's um, kind of daunting. Yeah. Um, I went. Virginia, I asked a friend of mine who is a travel counsellor, but she couldn't get anywhere it was through lockdown and nothing was open and it was very difficult and then she said look try somewhere like trail finders because they're specialists in doing these sort of things and i booked a virtual meeting with them and i got this young chap called ben and he just bought into what i was saying or what i wanted to do and why i wanted to do it and he was brilliant he he booked all the flights where he could he sort of said like oh, we can't do Shetland there are no flights at the moment which was true I checked because they hadn't put their schedules out um so I booked you from Edinburgh so you can do that bit before you go on and I can't do this I can't book you know you're going to have to have a um, car in um both in Finland and the first part of my journey in Canada but he's booked everything as much as he can including three-way flight you know flights so that I arrive before like when my husband's joining me in Canada I arrive at Calgary airport 45 minutes before his flight's due in so that I can meet him there and do everything um on the 26th of June I'm flying from Canada to New Zealand from Vancouver to New Zealand he's flying from Vancouver to Heathrow and my son is flying from Heathrow to Singapore and then after a four hour stop over to um, uh, to New Zealand to um, Auckland so that we meet up I can, and I can meet him up yeah. and even things like I said to him with the first flights he suggested for Robert to go to Singapore and then would have meant a 10 hour stop over for him in Singapore but would have been a nearer time from when I'm arriving because I actually when I fly on the 26th, I don't arrive till five o'clock in the morning on the 28th because of time zones. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and it phased Robert. The 10 hours was just too much for him. He couldn't cope with the thought of no one looking after him for 10 hours. Yeah. So I've changed that. So he, he arrives later, which means I can go to the hotel. And even there, he's booked so that I book, I'm in the hotel. I've got a hotel was booked for the night before I arrive so that when I get to the hotel at five o'clock in the morning the bedroom's available I don't have to wait for changeover you yeah. know it being cleaned and all that that's already going to be done because it's pre-booked for the night before so, so I that, can go. that's what um what Ben the the trailblazer he's trailblazer. done yeah, he, he's, yeah. So he's taken all that stress 
Yeah, he's wrong. basically, I gave him the outline of where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do yeah. and how I wanted to do it. And he's asked a few questions from around and put up a suggestion of his, what he thought fitted with what I wanted to do. Uh, told me where he couldn't do things. So like when I go to the South Island in New Zealand, they can't book tours. You have to do yeah. it through a local tour operator there so I've got to organize that myself but he's told me all that beforehand and I think I've changed three things on the itinerary that he gave me mm. just three things and then he's had to change two more where hotels he'd suggested weren't available so yeah. he's come back to me and said well these are your alternatives and you know I've looked at them and thought no I don't want that one but that one looks really nice. So I call um, that stress away because that's, that's wonderful. What I just off. couldn't believe yeah. how well he got and understood what I was trying to achieve, you know. So I said, you know, and the outline was really vague. Like, well, when I'm in Canada, I want to go to Prince Edward Island. And then from there, I, you know, I suppose I ought to go to Toronto. And yes, I'd like the Niagara Falls, but then I want to go on the train. And that's the only stipulations I gave him mm. New Zealand was I want to follow the um, Lord of the Rings so I want to go to Hobbiton and things like that I want to do the train from Auckland down to Wellington and perhaps stop off in the National Park on the way because it's an 11 hour train ride and I don't want an 11 hours <laughs> <laughs> in one go and yeah. everywhere he's booked or tried to book he said, oh, yes, um, we, you've got tickets so you can go to Hobbiton and you can go and do that and you can go and do this. And, yeah. you know, again, you can do that. You can't do that. And then one of the changes I made for his itinerary is I only had a four hour stopover coming back from Singapore. I've now made that two day two. I was going to make it one day. And he said, no, you need two. You need mm -hmm. two nights because if what you want to do, it's no point doing it just for one night. And I'm staying at Raffles Hotel. Oh, oh, awesome. Also, oh, I've, I've, I've had a Singapore sling at Raffles Hotel, but that's yeah. staying there. Oh, yes. I, I'm just so excited for you. I mean, as you talk about it, you can see how, how excited you are about it. But just to sort of like um, summarise what first of all, to, to do something like this, you have to dare to dream. Yes. And we forget how to dream. Um, yeah. And, and cut, you know, in the midlife movement, part of the membership and part of the quest that we go through is allowing ourselves to dream again and, and to yeah. remember what we what fires us up or finds yeah. something new to fire us up um but it's not only just to dream yes you have to dare to dream that's a start a dream can stay just a dream you yeah. have to decide that it's going to happen yes and even if you can't do it like I said I couldn't do it when I started that dream, because I still have mum here, um, and that would have been impossible. I could not possibly have left my husband to look after my mum on her on his own. It just wouldn't have worked. Um, and so you you have to say right. Well, I can't do it now, and also I need X amount of money to do it. But if I put away so much at a time, when I can do it, and set a date when you can do it, mm. that for me was the absolute key because once I said in 2022 I'm going to do it I had a target to hit and the dream then becomes more of a reality if you don't have a target to hit you'll miss it yeah you'll just keep <laughs> dreaming so yeah. so dream I mean you have to dream, have to be able to visualize it to even start to plan oh, it yeah so you dream you plan yeah. um, you get help yeah um, you know so you outsource <laughs> well, source, you get help but the right help mm -hmm. um I and say I was so lucky with this um travel counsellor because I think if I'd spoken to anyone else they might not have actually got what I was saying to them and yeah. it wouldn't have been the same but you also have to listen to other people I and mean, especially on this traveling thing you know every time someone when I go somewhere and say well this is what I'm going to do and they say oh well why don't you look at that so again one of the things I didn't say earlier was in Copenhagen apparently there is the oldest um, ship still doing traveling and do, taking passengers up and down the river um, 
and it was sort of oh I, can I do that is it feasible actually it isn't for me because I'm only there two nights but I can actually go and see it yeah. and, you know take photos of it and say oh I've seen it at least um so it's listening to what people and this ring in um Finland because I would never have known about that no so you listen no. to what other people have done and their experiences and you'll sit you sift them is that feasible yes okay I'll have a look at it is that one well not really so I'll put that one to one side you know mm. Mm. well I mean it, it, it I I'm sure a lot of people will consider you to be very brave big especially with the oh, very stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well there's a the thin line between the two isn't there yeah. <laughs> but no I mean you're going to come back with some fantastic experiences and and the thing is this is something because you've been planning it for so long it's given you that that sort of joy for it's not just the trip is it it's the planning the, anticipation the planning is is part of the trip really yeah. because without the planning the trip's not reality and yes, I know I've still got a lot to do, but again, you can plan to plan sort of thing. So what would you say to anybody listening now who's thinking, oh, I really want to do X, Y or Z? What would you say? Just do it. Just set yourself when you're going to do it. Again, it might not be feasible now, but, yeah. you know, as I said, I, I decided that mine was going to be, and I laughingly call it my gap year, even though it's only three months. Um, once you've made your dream set a date to it it becomes more real and then you can own it and then you start planning and thinking i can do this i can do that and you know my i didn't book it at all until earlier this year i think i started looking at booking it in august mm. so i thought well right, we're coming out of lockdown things are beginning to open up but yeah where the countries I wanted to go to none of them were open mm. when I booked it you didn't I let that stop you <laughs> no, I just had to see through it and fortunately because yeah. it was booked during the, where and everything was locked down it can it's movable mm. but I'm just hoping that it is going to happen on the dates I want it to happen I've moved everything else out. Um, I've bored everyone mindless when I keep saying, oh, do you know I'm going to be away then? <laughs> I can't do that. I'm, I can't do the audit. I'm away. <laughs> it's, it's lovely. <laughs> Responses. So, you know, and then, the, but the anticipation is as much as doing it. I'm now looking at, I'm, I'm the world's worst photographer. I'm looking at what sort of camera I should take so that I can capture it. We'll talk later. Um, yes, <laughs> I'm looking at um, trying to set up a blog, probably on Facebook, so I can do a daily, this mm. is where I am today, and hopefully people will be interested enough to yeah, definitely. Uh, follow it and, and watch it, you know, and say, right, today I'm in... Copenhagen and this is what I'm planning so you're not just um you're not just traveling you're you're taking photographs you're you're filming you're you're writing a blog you you know <laughs> it's opening up so much isn't it it's so it. interest and excitement yeah because I hope other people will be as interested and as excited as me and mm. one of the and I know it sounds silly one of the plans I haven't got is that a lot of places I've not got anywhere booked to what I do I've looked up <coughs> on TripAdvisor I've looked up on Expedia where you can go um, I've bought maps of all the countries you know real proper big maps we've got a world map on on the wall in one of our rooms where we're going to put red dots of where I'm going so that my husband and son can follow me in the main, I'm going to ask the people there, what's the best place to go? Yeah. What do they think is, you know, the cream of their country? Because yeah. they'll be the ones in the know. They'll be able yeah. to say, oh, yeah, you can go on that. And big red buses, I'm hoping, are going to be in a lot of these places because they're fantastic because you just sit on them. and The tourist bus. The it's tourist it's bus. Yeah. And listen to it and get on and off where you fancy. So I mm. think that'll be a good um help as well mm. they're including your family in your plans and I should imagine that's key to the to getting the support as well yeah. but, you know you're, but we've also yeah. we've also I've also thought about it because obviously I'm talking about my eldest son coming 
we've got I've got another son um but he wouldn't make he wouldn't man well one he wouldn't be able to fly on his own there's mm. no way he would I'm even considering putting Robert as a vulnerable passenger um but David would definitely have to go like that mm. um secondly I think the flights would be too long thirdly I think he'd get bored mm. very quickly because his attention span is like 30 seconds so I've said to him where what does he want to do Mm. and it keeps changing but it's now we're either going to be Harry Potter world in Watford or some war museum somewhere at one point it was Germany but I think that's come back to England and after I come back you know have a couple of months back I'll take him and do something with him so that he feels like he's part of it as well yeah yeah you can't I, I mean the point you know I wanted to make really was that we're very often we think when we're going to do something like this it's throwing your life in the air you know mm. and and to do something but you you don't have to do that you can have your thing um and still sort of everybody be happy around you yeah and, and, yeah. and support you in it so yeah they're all doing the bits they want to do um yeah. and not the bits that they might find mightily boring you know so and it's not stopping you because a lot of people would think oh my husband doesn't want to do that I, I won't do it no nah um I've never <laughs> been one to be <laughs> restrained by other people not wanting to do things yeah. kind of I've used especially over the last three years but even to I think mostly through my career because I was kind of a first for everything you know we were the first year that were allowed to use cal calculators in A-level maths the first year in my accounting exams, we were allowed to use a calculator, which sounds bizarre now where everyone's got everything on, on their phone. Yeah. But we, were, we had to get special permission to be able to use a calculator. <laughs> um, I came, I started work the year the Equal Pay Opportunities Act came in. So there's a lot of firsts. And I, and I worked in a man's world because I was in construction mm. and there weren't many um, I was even told that a woman would never be a finance director of a construction company, and I achieved that. Um, but my mantra kind of, there's a song by Labby Sifri about apartheid, really, but in it, there's a, a line that says, and I looked him in the eye and to say, I'm going to do it anyway. And I kind of think that is my mantra. You know, if you say I can't do it, I'm bloody well going to. <laughs> For you good for you but like you say if, even with that attitude even with all of that in the middle of midlife you kind of lost your confidence yeah. and it's just so great to see yeah. it come back again yeah. and you know for you to, to to be taking this on we're gonna have to wrap up I could talk to you all morning <laughs> I love traveling and, and, and stories like this I absolutely love it but um will you come back and and tell us you know how you got on next yes. year yeah yes. It'll be about a time as well. Right, Tom. It will. <laughs> so just to conclude, thank you so much for coming us, coming, telling us all about it, and and all the very best. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.